after reading that, you're probably thinking, oh, I know what he's preaching on. I saw the video he just shared recently, and I know he's preaching on the uh, spirit-empowered movement, charismatic movement. And I'm actually not, although I'm listening to that and thinking, man, I really just want to just clear off a spot and preach on something. There's a lot in that chapter, man. I kind of wish I was preaching through that expository, but I'm not. In fact, this might not make sense at first, but the title of the message tonight is Words That Are Sinful. Words That Are Sinful. And this comes from a conversation we had last Thursday. If anybody was here, uh, sat over there and listened to our conversation. Uh, I love these kind of conversations. And I think this is where we get a lot of edifying is when somebody's reading the Bible or something comes up and they say, what about this subject, right? We begin talking about it. And then I begin thinking, I just need to preach on that. And when it causes me to dig into the Bible and, and uh, study that subject, I like it. You know, this is iron sharpening iron. We're supposed to help each other out. And, and so the thing that we were specifically talking about was what constitutes a bad word. And, uh, you know, we, we use the word bad, bad word. There's lots of names. I'm going to get into that in this message. But uh, our particular conversation, although this message won't deal entirely with that, that kind of just got the ball going in my mind. But that particular conversation, we were saying things like this, like, isn't a word just a word. I mean, a word in, its, in and of itself doesn't really have, you know, it's not good or bad. And I thought about the analogy of music. You know, there are those out there who say, you know, there's no bad music. You can use listen to any style of music or whatever because music is all moral. And music in and of itself doesn't have morals. And I'm thinking, well, no, I understand what you're saying. Notes, instruments, all these things in and of themselves are not wicked. But when you put them together and they communicate in a certain way, that uh, feeling or the statement or, or the words that the message that is portraying could be bad, right? So so music, you could say it's all moral in a sense, but but we know that it can be used to create something bad, all right? And so words are kind of the same way. Words, the importance of words are conveying a message and telling people, you know, a particular thought. And so that passage that Brother Justin just read speaks a lot about how we're supposed to communicate. And if everybody's got saying different things or we're all speaking in tongues, which would be speaking another language, I'm not going to get into that to, uh, tonight, but it's not this, uh, this thing that a lot of people say about speaking in tongues right now where they just start making up gibberish and, uh, uh, and all. But this is actually literal tongues. All right? So I could come in here and I could speak Spanish. Well, I, I can't, but... <laughs> My wife could. No, she can't. She's not supposed to speak in church. We just read about that. <laughs> a person could get up here and speak in Spanish and literally be saying true things from the Bible. And if somebody else came in here and didn't understand those things, it would be meaningless. Right. And Paul's saying, well, who are you edifying? You're not edifying anybody if they're not getting the message. So then another thought that was brought up, and this is what the, our conversation had to deal with specifically, was the use of words that we see in the Bible that are considered by some people as cuss words or bad words. And I, this part really interests me because I, for a long time, have said, look, a word is just a word. Who decides if a word is good or a word is bad or whatever? And so the thought that was brought up and that we were talking about was, but doesn't the Bible say all, every word of God is pure? Okay, every word of God is pure, and I believe that. So then you can look in the Bible and say, well, what about the word that we, there are words in the Bible that would freak people out if I got up here and started using them. Are, you, are we all in agreement? It's okay, so I'll just throw some out there. The word bastard is in the Bible. And so everybody's like, oh, that's a bad word. Well, it's not in this sense that we understand what I'm saying whenever I say that word. If I read it from the Bible, uh, you understand, hopefully, what it's saying. Somebody else came in here, and or maybe a child who's never been talking it differently would say, whoa, the preacher just said a bad word. You understand how that could be communicating something sort of bad. You say, well, but every word of the Lord is pure. Yeah, but only if people understand it. Does that make sense? So, what about the King James Bible? Though? Aren't those the inspired word of God? For sure. For sure they're inspired words of God. But language takes different forms over years and I'm not suggesting anybody ever change the Bible, but I'm suggesting that when we read the Bible, there are some things in the Bible you know that in the English vernacular today it means something opposite. You know, when we're preaching the gospel, how many times do you have to stop at a word and say, now that word doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> and you kind of have to explain what that word means. Hey, I would never say, 
but uh, let's not read this word because it's in the Bible, you know, because everyone thinks it's a bad word. But what I would do is explain it. Now, if I'm preaching and I've got an a audience, I guess, uh, that's made up of people who don't understand that. You know, I remember uh, when I preached in Steadfast Oklahoma City, and the title of the message, I had to use this because it was in the Bible, and it, 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 you just have to know the whole context behind it. But I used the word talking about a donkey, and I said, dumb ass. And I knew that as soon as I say that, and I, I mean, I understood this from the very beginning, but I'm like, some people, especially kids, maybe heard that word, don't know, hey, that word is Bible for donkey. They're just going to think that I'm up here just trying to cuss and like, you know, hey, and, and look, some people do that for shock value. You know, they, they know that if they say that, everybody's going to be like, oh, preacher said that word. And look, that's kind of why I used it in the title, because I wanted people to click and listen to the message. Right? That's what you do sometimes. All right. But I want people to understand what I'm saying or else what's the point? Right. So so even though every word is pure, what is a word? That's the main thing. We're talking about. What is a word? A word is a communication. We're going to have to communicate that. We're going to have to make sure they understand what we're saying. Now, I'm not going to spend the message talking about this exact subject and, uh, well, what can you say, what can't you say. But I'm never going to stop you from using a word that's in the Bible and say, oh, don't use that word, that's a word, that's a bad word. I literally know people that say hell is a bad word. And I'm talking about using it in any sense, even a biblical sense. There are people that believe that's a bad word. So if they were to be saying, hey, well, you don't want to go to that bad place. <laughs> you know, you don't want to go to the, you know, uh, <laughs> and they don't know what to say, you know, and, and so, uh, uh, so there are some people that they, they just don't get that. Look, I, I, I would never try to get people's mind like, hey, you got to be afraid about everything that you say. All I would say is just make sure your conversation is holy, you know, that you know. And here's the thing that I found out. Sometimes somebody will say a word and maybe they're convinced in their mind that it's not a bad word, but they don't know how other people feel about it. So when they say it, it kind of it's kind of said in like a whispering, like, ooh. Or how about this? You say it, uh, and then everybody laughs about it. You know, I got some examples going through my head, but everybody laughs about it. The reason they're laughing isn't because of what they said, it's because of the word that they used. So what caused them to laugh? Because something inside says, whoa, I can't believe you used that word. Right? So, so there are things that we have to think about when we're using words. But that led me to think, into a, a, a bigger discussion. Because the, the final question in our conversation was this, well, here's what I want to know. If I use the word, am I sinning? I certainly don't want to sin before God, right? So if I use the word, am I, am I sinning? In my mind, you know, this is what led to this message. But to answer that direct question is, man, if you are using a word and it's in the Bible and in your heart, you don't, you don't mean it in that kind of word, you don't think that you're conveying that kind of a message, and the Holy Spirit is convicting you of that, I'm not going to tell you what words you can say. In a manner of speaking, a word is a word, okay? Now, I might say, hey, if you're behind the pulpit and I'm the pastor, I don't want you to use these words. Everybody can respect that, can't they? I mean, do you see any reason, you know? <laughs> I mean, unless I told you to, you know, preach some false doctrine or something like that, they'd say, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'll preach somewhere else or whatever. But, uh, but you can respect that. But anyway, this is what it got me to thinking. What can we do with our mouth or words that we can say that the Bible clearly teaches is something that's sinful? Okay, because that is what should be our concern. I don't want to sin against God. Now, people obviously are mixed up on uh, even to some degree what sin is. Okay, I remember knocking on the door one time and a lady went to a Catholic church of some sort and she said, uh, you know, she started saying, well, I just don't like that. You know, there's just a lot of things in there that that just aren't going on right. She even said something about, you know, all these priests that are molesting kids and all this kind of stuff. And, and we're talking, and then all of a sudden she said, but you know what really bothers me is that that priest says X, Y, Z is sinful. You know, and, and she was she mentioned all these things, and I'm like, yeah, that is sinful. <laughs> you know, even he actually says this is a sin. Like, yeah, I don't think you understand what sin means. See, some people don't understand, they're just thinking, well, a sin must be like something really, really bad that will send you to hell. Well, guess what? All sin sends us to heaven. Amen. And I should take that back. Sin doesn't send us to hell. We're all guilty and going to hell because of sin. Right. Right. What sends us to hell now is not receiving the remedy to that Amen. sin. You know, we, have, we all understand that, but I want to make that clear. So some people misunderstand 
sin. And here's the bottom line. We all sin. <laughs> we all sin. Now look, we're not sinners in God's eyes if we're saved. We are under his blood. We're covered. We're righteous in his eyes. But look, in the flesh, we're going to commit sins every day. And I'll show you tonight, I believe strongly that we commit probably multiple sins every day mm -hmm. with our mouth. Something that has to do with our mouth and the things that we say, we're probably sinning all the time. Look, we are sinful flesh, and we yeah. sin all the time. And so there's no way to say, like, you know, how can I be absolutely sinless? Now, Jesus said, be ye perfect. <laughs> right? We understand to some degree we're trying to get better. We're trying to give things up. We're trying to do uh, more righteous things, you know, for the Lord and, and, and be more pleasing to the Lord. That should be our heart. That should be our, our, our desire. But the fact of the matter is we are going to sin every single day. And whenever somebody starts thinking, oh, no, I, you know, I just don't think I've sinned in, in the last week or something like that, well, then you probably don't know what sin is. You know? And you don't realize how holy God is and how he takes something that you might think, well, that's not it. I mean, that's a sin. This is just kind of like a little just like mistake or something like that. No, anything that goes against God's word and is contrary to his his uh, personality, who he is, is a sin. All right. The Bible says that whosoever commit a sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So any law that we see in the Bible that God commanded us, anything that transgresses that, you break that law, it's a sin. Yeah. Okay? And what's the Bible say? All have sinned, and because of our sin, and come short of the glory of God. That's kind of a definition in, in, in of itself. If you think about it, hey, if you fall short of God's glory, it's because whatever you're whatever you've done is sinful. Right? Everything sin, because of sin, we fall short of the glory of God. Amen. We're not perfect. Okay. Amen. Everything that we do contrary to God is sinful. We gotta understand that. And it's not just like a well, you know, but it's not that big of a deal. Well, where do you draw that line? Who decides, right. you know, what the really big deals are? Now, for the sake of governing a nation, yeah, there are some sins. The Bible says death is the penalty, right? And look, if you if you kill that person, it's going to help stop your society from getting, you know, just totally bad, right? So, so for the sake of governing ourselves, yeah, we have to weigh out certain sins. But as far as God's concerned, anything that's unrighteous is sin. Any transgression of the law is sin, and we sin all the time. So, how do we sin? with our mouths, or what the Bible says in some places, evil communication, okay? Again, what is a word? A word is communicating a thought. I'll give you an example. Jesus Christ is the word of God. What does that mean? Well, he is the communication of God's mind to the world, right? He is God's express uh, image. And so, uh, so there is a, a word means the communication of a thought. Does that make sense? Like, I don't even have to use a verbal word. I, you don't have to hear a sound out of my mouth. I can still convey to you a word through a gesture, through sign language, you know, through an attitude. There were some doors we knocked on today, and they didn't even have to say a word. I could see in their eye. They said, not interested. <laughs> they said, not interested, even though they didn't speak a word. So you understand what I mean? I, I want you to understand this. It's communication that we're talking about, okay? And so the Bible talks about lots of different ways. Uh, that we in our communication can commit sin. I'm going to give you seven. Like I, I don't, I'm not saying that this is exhaustive, but I just kind of racked my brain trying to think of different ways, and I came up with seven that are pretty clear. I, I think most of the sins that we can commit with our mouth are going to fall into one of these categories. Okay, number one is this blasphemy, blasphemy. Now I got a lot of scripture, and so we're going to turn to some of them, and then a lot of them I'm just going to read to you. So if you want to write these down, you can, or try to turn to them real fast while I'm reading them, you're welcome to, or you can just listen to me read them. But uh, there, there's a few that we'll, we'll turn to, okay? What is blasphemy? Well, the English definition, going back as early as the 1300s. Now, you go before the 1300s, the English language was really, in fact, this would be called Old English, so we really wouldn't understand some of those words uh, uh, at that point. Uh, in our in our modern day, okay, but the words you can see where they came from the other word I don't know if that makes sense, but the word blasphemy has always meant something like this an impious 
or profane speaking of God or sacred things. Okay, and that's been kind of an understanding. So we talk about something that's sacred, and you talk about it in a way that's just flippant. It's not really meant as a as a sacred thing. Okay, and so uh, profanity, same thing. You're taking something that was holy and you're making it uh, you're making it profane. Uh, so the Bible uh, actually here's an interesting thing. If you consider like all the words that we call bad words, right? A lot of them have to do with this thought of taking something that is holy, right? Something that is relig uh, should be kind of religious in the right sense of the word, and then making it profane or making it mean something different than it was meant to mean. And so you got the word swear word. You know, you, you should swear. Well, what do they mean by swearing? I'm not swearing. <laughs> You say a bad word, someone say, hey, he just said a swear word. Did he really swear? Do you know what swear means? <laughs> you know, how about this uh, cuss word? A cuss word, what does that mean? That's just short for curse or just a different form of curse, all right? A curse word. I didn't curse anybody. Just said, uh, you know, I didn't swear. I didn't take an oath. I didn't curse anybody and condemn them to hell or, or, or wish ill upon them. Profanity, what's that mean? Profane. Right? Why callest thou, you know, profane? <laughs> you know, what I call holy or, or something like that. But profane would be the idea of taking something that is holy, something that is good, and defiling. That's profane, okay? And so uh, all these words are pretty similar. The vulgarity, right? What does that mean? Well, you know the vulgar, what vulgar speech is? You know, the, the, the Latin vulgate? You know what that idea was? It's just to take something uh, that was only a certain kind of class of people understood and make it available to the common man, right? So vulgar had to do with something that is common. But what does common mean? Well, the Bible, you remember whenever uh, Peter saw all the food come down in the, uh, in the vision right. and the sheep came down with all the food in it and he said, oh, I can't eat that, oh, it's unclean. And he said, why do you uh, call unclean that which I have messing it up but you understand he said why do you call unclean or common you right you look that up unclean or common he's saying you know why are you calling it just a common thing like a, a bad thing if i've said that it's okay and it's pure and so uh, you understand all these words have to do with the origin has to do with taking something that is good something that is holy and making it to mean you know something else right and so this is a uh, a big deal when the bible speaks of blasphemy it's talking about ascribing to something or someone something that belongs to God. You're ascribing or attributing to somebody else. That would be blasphemy. So here's a couple examples. Look at 2 Samuel 12. 2 Samuel 12. Blasphemy is the first thing I want to show you that we can do with our mouth that is a sin against God. 2 Samuel 12 verse 14 says, how be it, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. So what's he saying? He's saying, look, because of your sin and your wickedness, these other nations, what are they doing? Well, they're just describing victory to their gods or whatever, you know, and they're, they're, they're saying good things about their gods and bad things about the true God, right? They're... They're blaspheming the name of the Lord. Look at James chapter 2. James talks about rich people. I tell you, the more, the more I deal with people, now rich is a relative term. To some people, this this neighborhood, you know, that we're in right now, and the doors that we're knocking on, they would say, "Man, that's that's maybe middle class." Some might even say it's lower than middle class. I don't know. A few would say it was rich, but to me, it's a wealthier neighborhood compared to some, you know, some places. And do you see how, you know, I don't know how everybody was, but we were just talking about how like, these people, man, their whole life is about. You know, look, I like taking care of yards, and I'm glad, I, I was walking around, man, I really like the way they take care of the yard and all this kind of stuff. But these people, whole life, it's just like, you know, self and getting wealth and, and, 
you know, when you bring up God, they see you with the Bible, it's, it's just like, man, they, they don't want anything to do with you. The Bible has a lot to say about that. Jesus said it's easier for uh, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to go to heaven. That's, I mean, obviously he's using a bit of a, of a metaphor, but, but that tells you something about the mindset of people who are wealthy because they feel like, hey, I've got everything I need. You know, I don't need, uh, I don't need God. I'm good. Or, or they believe in a different God that they've made of themselves, and they're like, hey, I'm good. I got my God. I don't want your God. <laughs> right? And so here's what the Bible says, James chapter 2, verse 7. He's talking about the rich people here, and he says, Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by that by uh, the which ye are called? Okay, and so he's saying that the rich people out there, man, they don't care about your God. They blaspheme, you know, God. And then here, here's what the rich people do. Oh, I'm so blessed. God has blessed me. Well, you just refuse the gospel whenever I knock on your door. God's not blessing you. He's not going to bless the works of uh, iniquity and evil and and uh, there's wicked people out there that say, I'm blessed. You know, God bless America. Look at, uh, look at how, how he's blessing us. And then they list all these ways that he's blessing us. And I'm like, hey, you don't even know what a blessing is. Right? God's not going to bless evil, even though you might think. Yeah, so here's my, my conclusion. I'm like, hey, prospering the way that the world says, says what the world says is prospering, that's a curse, right? Yeah. If you live in this kind of a neighborhood and you say, wow, I've got it all, but you deny Christ and you blaspheme his name, but that's a curse. Right. right? And I would say, hey, give me not riches nor poverty. <laughs> right? Don't give me riches or poverty. I don't want to have to, I don't want to curse your name, but I also don't want to just reject you and think that I've got everything made and I don't need the Lord. I just want to be, you know, give me things that are convenient for me, is what the guy said. Because uh, we want to just serve the Lord. And I love how Brother uh, Justin put that this afternoon. He said, man, life has gotten so simple since I've just decided I'm just going to do what the Lord wants me to do and not worry about all the other things in life. You know? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, so here's another example. You probably already thought about this is uh, Mark chapter 3. Mark chapter 3. Some of these I'm going to go through real fast, but I want to spend a little bit of time on blasphemy. blasphemy. Mark chapter 3, verse 29. So in this, uh, in this context here, the scribes and the Pharisees are saying that Jesus is doing all these miracles by Beelzebub, right? In other words, hey, this, he, this is demonic powers that is allowing him to do all these things. And then Jesus begins to uh, rebuke them about that. And here's what he says in verse 29. He says, but he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost. Let me back up to 28. Verily I say unto you, all sin shall be forgiven unto the sons of men. And blasphemies, wherewithsoever they shall blaspheme. Right? You can blaspheme man all you want. You can blaspheme, you know, you can talk bad about people and all. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost shall uh, have never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Because they said he hath an unclean spirit. So here's Jesus doing things of God, right? And, uh, and, he, and he's obviously, you know, we we don't do things quite the, the, that way anymore, and that's a whole other message. Uh, but, you know, what we do is preach the gospel. And sometimes people will just, you know, refuse to believe that gospel. And this is kind of what I believe is going, is going on. With that. There's probably more to it, but the blasphemy in the Holy Ghost, it's not just saying, like, taking the Holy Ghost name in vain or something like that. It's, it's, it's talking about, you know, refusing... God. I mean, how could people in, look, even whenever God's wrath is being poured out in Revelation, you see people who are just continuing to do these works of iniquity, and they refuse to repent. And why, how could you even see God's miracles, and see the working hand of God, and see his chastening, and all that kind of stuff, and still refuse, right? It's because you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. The working of the Holy Ghost, the drawing of you to him, you know, the preaching of the gospel, I believe when we preach the gospel, there's something in it, everybody who says, you know, I think what they're saying is right. Yeah. I think there's something deep in them because God gives everybody a measure of faith. I believe that that's the case. Look, we all have a something built within us that knows who God is. I believe that. Okay. Yeah. And when we preach the gospel, there should be something in that says, hey, listen to him. He's telling the truth. But a man that rejects that is in a bad place. Okay. Yeah. And I believe that's rejection of the Holy Spirit. Uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That's my 
uh, that's my thinking. But blasphemy of the Holy Spirit could, mean, could, could manifest itself in many ways, okay? One is taking the name of the Lord in vain. Exodus 20, verse 7, and other places in the Bible, uh, uh, I'll quote this again, but it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Amen. Now, I believe the main application for this is somebody who would be unsaved and say, and claim the name of the Lord. How many people do that, right? They're unsaved, but they claim. How many people are going to stand before God when they say, Lord, Lord? You know, right. haven't I prophesied in your name and cast out devils and done many wonderful works? And he's going to say, I never knew you. Why? Because they didn't really have him, right? They took his name in vain. It didn't really mean anything, okay? But I, I am not against the application that says, hey, we should just we should never use the Lord's name flippantly, right? That would be profaning his name for sure, right? If we just walked around just saying, God this and, and, and Jesus this and, and, and we don't really mean it, like we're just we're just making light of his name, using his name as a bad word, right? We are pro it is profanity, right. it is blasphemy. Right, because we're using. So I, when we taught our kids, just to be on the safe side, we're like, hey, we're just not going to do that. Now, I'm not saying don't say God, don't say Jesus. That would be that would be dumb, right? But what I'm saying is don't use His name in vain. And we took it a step farther and said, hey, don't say, don't say gosh, don't say G, don't say G whiz. All these we taught them that these are euphemisms, and what they're in essence. What they're doing is they're taking that which is holy and they're not, and they're just you know making light of it. It's not a big deal. They're taking it in vain. And I would say this could even go as far as to say, look, you know, if I start talking about him, so one of the things we talked about was if somebody says, uh, and this is obviously a, a, a to the world a cuss word, okay? But a lot of us will use it from time to say like hell no, all right? And somebody will be using that kind of terminology. What they're doing is they're taking something that is a serious matter. Right. Hell is a serious matter, right? And they're just kind of making light of it, you know, or making it, man, it's as hot as Hades in here, <laughs> you know, or hot as hell, or all these things that they're doing, it all means the same thing. And what they're doing is taking something that's a serious matter and they're making light of it. So we talk about, well, that would be similar to somebody saying, heaven's no. And most people would say, well, that's not a cuss word. But look, in essence, isn't that also taking something that is holy and just talking about it like, you know, and Mr. Betsy, well, why did you even talk about heaven? Like, well, what is your what is your point in that? You know, I might have lost some of you on that. But the, you understand know what I'm saying? We should take words that are godly words, holy words. We don't need to just use them flippantly right. as common speech that doesn't really mean anything. Right? That could be blasphemous. But look, I don't use Lord's name in vain. Uh, we didn't do the whole, uh, uh, what is it that they used to say, uh, Oh, OMG, you know, we were like, no, nah, OMG, we don't we don't do that. Right. And some people are like, I, I even had Christians that said, oh, you're so ridiculous. Like, what are you talking about? That's not a bad word. I mean, you know, that's not what it means when it says taking the, 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 the name of the Lord in vain. Well, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and play the same. Right. <laughs> and just try to be clean with my words and not be offensive. Uh, in the, you know, I don't want to offend God. And so, uh, and so that's what we kind of taught uh, our kids. Right, claiming that somebody is something is from God when it's not, that's obviously blasphemy. Claiming or the opposite, okay, so you're claiming something's from God that's not from him, or you're claiming whenever God does something, you're saying, Well, that's not God. You know, that would be bad too. Now, look, I so I remember as a kid thinking, well then if somebody's speaking in tongues and I say, you know, hey man, that's of the devil. Well, I need to be careful because I might be, you know, blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Like, like I can preach a message and show you why that's wrong. Okay, I can preach it, uh, but what we're talking about is things that, you know, we're just ascribing to the devil, you know, that actually God did. Uh, I, 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 can't, I can't get, I can't get into that. I don't have enough time. But, uh, but you understand what I'm saying? That we don't, want, we want to be careful not to uh, blame the devil on something that God's doing, or to claim that God did something when the devil's doing. Okay, so this is one of the things of blasphemy. How about this? Claiming something, uh, well, I already said, claiming something that came from God is evil. Isaiah 5, 20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, sir. That put darkness for light, and light for darkness. 
that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So we were walking down and then, and then there's, this, there's this sign and it just incidentally was rainbow colors. <laughs> and it says, love is love and blah, blah, blah. And pretty much anything you can think of that the Bible was against, I mean, it was on the sign. <laughs> and it's just wanting to let you know, hey, this is where we stand. And you know, there's like a religion out there right now that's saying, hey, this is good. This is love. What all these people are saying, this is hate speech and all that. People that are, are Bible thumpers or whatever, they're haters and they're wicked and they're evil. Look, God says you're calling what's good, evil, and evil good. That's right. right. And, uh, and, 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 and I, I, Brother Justin gave me a track and said, hey, I'm praying for you. <laughs> <laughs> I went up there and it said it had a sign that was like, we don't want anybody. It said no soliciting, but then it went on and it was like, no religious beliefs, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, look, between the sign and that sign, I'm just going to take the leadership of the Lord and say, these guys are gone. <laughs> right? You might not think I should have done that, but, but like, I'm not going to waste my time on that house. I'm not going to give that which is holy to dogs. <laughs> okay? that, Jesus said that. Okay, so, uh, uh, so anyway, last thing. I spent a little bit of time on that, but let me move on to the next thing. Things we can do with our mouths or our words. And again, it, could, it might not even be a verbal word. <laughs> but we're expressing something. Things that we can do that would be considered a sin. Cursing. All right. Now, I'm not talking about cursing. What we just call, hey, saying a bad word is uh, is cursing, cussing, whatever. Uh, here is what cursing means. Again, from the 13th century. All right. So this is an old usage of the English word. By the way, the King James, even though a lot of people today don't use certain of these words on a regular basis. Almost any of those words that are archaic, you can look up in a modern dictionary and it's going to be one of the top three definitions. Okay, if you look that up, it's going to tell you what the word means. So it's not that hard to explain biblical words, it's just our society doesn't necessarily understand, understand them. Probably a good reason for that. But, uh, but here's what we mean when we say cursing to wish evil to, we understand. Curse, to curse somebody, to excommunicate, or to swear profanely, use blasphemous or profane language. Okay, so these are other ways uh, that we do use the word cursing, okay, but for the most part, it means to wish evil to. And we see that in the uh, context of Bible comparing scripture to scripture. But James 3.10 says, out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brother, these things ought not so to be. You know, we can't just on one side of our mouth just going around trying to say good things, pleasant things for the Lord, building people up, and then out of the other side just cursing people, right? You know, let's explain that a little bit more. So the Bible says this. Look at Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7, verse 10. This is Jesus talking here, and he says, For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother... Let him die the death. That's Je now, this is New Testament. <laughs> this is Jesus saying, hey, here's what Moses said. And then he's going to rebuke the Pharisees for uh, essentially dishonoring their mother and father. But if you go back to the verse that he's quoting in Leviticus 20, yeah, Leviticus 20, the same one that says that adulterers and adulteresses should be put to death, that homosexuals should be put to death, that uh, beast, uh, bestiality, whatever, should be put to death. And it doesn't mention pedophilia because I don't even think that even crossed their mind <laughs> back then. But look, this world is so wicked. I'm telling you, I don't want to get off on this, but pedophilia is like the new hot topic of the day. And we got people, you remember whenever we had a president who got caught in the Oval Office doing some wickedness, and it was just like an uproar, and everyone talked about it, then all of a sudden it just turned into like a, well, it wasn't really that bad. All right? Then we get another president, and all kinds of stuff comes out. And I'm just like, the world is so desensitized to this stuff because it's just in the media all the time. People see it all the time. I'm telling you, pedophilia is the next one. It's just like you're hearing about all these people, Epstein's Island, and they're on this plane, and there's records and all this. And we were talking about this earlier, saying these guys aren't ever going to get punished, right? It's just going to get a slap on the wrist, or people are going to turn the other way, and people are not going to make a big deal about it. And what's going to happen is our society is going to get desensitized. And guess what happens? The Bible actually says, as in the days of Lot, in reference to the end times, guess what happened in the days of Lot? The whole city is surrounding 
and it says men and children, right? Now, how would those children know to live that kind of a lifestyle except for those older people impress those younger people to be like that? And we got predators like crazy. When I find out the statistic, it blows my mind. I can't even imagine. Like, I want to ignore it and just say this is not the America that I live in, right? I don't want to believe that it's really going on. But if you look at the numbers and the statistics, there is wickedness going on that you wouldn't even imagine out there. It's nice to live in our little comfy places and go to church with Christian brothers and sisters, have our nice families at home. But look, we live in a wicked world. Yeah, that's right. Okay, and so uh, why did I say all that? Because he said, <laughs> he who curses his mother and father should be put to death. Now, how many of you guys ever had that thrown back on you? Like, you believe the Bible? What, do you also believe we ought to put children to, to death who curse their mother and father? Man, well, that's what the Bible says. Amen. <laughs> If that was a law, do you think kids would be cursing their mother and father? Right. Now, what does cursing their mother and father mean? Well, they're obviously wishing evil upon them. So I'm going to give you a couple examples of something that you might say that would be cursing somebody. I hope you die. That would be a curse, right? Now, I've heard kids say that to their parents. No. I hate you. I hope you die. You know, I've heard people say that kind of wicked stuff. Now, that's, look, I'm not saying go kill your kid if they do that. But you ought to spank them pretty good. <laughs> and there was a day, I'm not saying every kid was put to death, because I think some kids may have put their parents to the test. But I bet you they said, hey, that's it, pack up, man, we're going to see the elders. And they're like, no, 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 I'm sorry, please, please, I'll never do it again. You know, because that was the thing. Hey, take them before the elders, and the elders could slap them for being uh, children that, whether they cursed their parents or they hit their parents or whatever, that was a sin. Uh, that was uh, punishable by death, okay? Yeah. Because once you start letting children get away with all manners of wickedness, guess what? They're the next generation, and now you got all wickedness entering into, yeah. uh, into the land. Yeah. The other thing that would be cursing, uh, again, I want to just preface, this is not a word you should ever, this isn't a phrase you should ever say. Don't ever say this to somebody, but damn you, all right? That's a serious thing that we should never use flippantly, all right? This is why if you're if you hear someone talk like that or if you were to watch on TV, if this is one of those words that people say, well, that's not really that bad of a word, right? You know, I might get like a PG rating or something. I don't even think it would get a PG rating. I think that <laughs> that probably wouldn't get a PG rating. Look, that's a serious word because you're talking about you're talking about somebody's eternal damnation. So well, that's not what I meant. Well, then you're using a holy word and using it flippantly like a very important, special word, using it flippantly. We don't want to go around saying that. Now look, is there a context where we could preach from the Bible and say that person's going to be condemned to hell? Most certainly, right? But we don't just want to use that flippantly, like it doesn't mean anything. Or worse yet, just because you're mad at somebody, say that to them, that's a, that is a curse. Wow. And a cursing is something uh, that we could do with our mouth that would be very sinful. Okay? And again, I taught, we taught our kids... They don't say darn, you know, don't say dang, dang it, you know, they say why? That's a euphemism for the same type of thing. Now, not everybody understands that. And I always tell this little illustration about when my kids were in Sunday school and their Sunday school teacher uh, was using some of these words and they came back and said, oh, mom, dad, my Sunday school teacher's cousin. And I feel like I need to tell you. And we're like, whoa, you're using that word. Well, they're using these euphemisms. And I think that most people, when they use euphemism, think that, you know, the motivation of their heart is, I don't want to say a bad word, so I'll just say this word. Well, I'm just going to say, hey, take the higher ground and say, I'm just not even going to mess around with those words. That gets into another category that we'll talk about here in a minute. Well, let me go on to the uh, next one. That would be false witness, okay? False, very false witness. You understand that's lying, right? You're saying something, uh, particularly if you say something about somebody that isn't true, you want them to get in trouble, you know? This starts with kids, you know, they do something and then they, and they, they steal a cookie and then they say, well, he must have done it. <laughs> Bear and false witness, right? <laughs> Bear and false witness is something that people do all the time. And the interesting thing that the Bible teaches that, <laughs> I must have missed something over here. The Bible teaches that very false witness, if you accuse somebody of doing something and they found out that you were lying and that person was, wasn't was innocent of that the person who bared uh, bore false witness 
their punishment was whatever they were, you know, yeah. whatever you would punish that person for had they did what they said that they did. <laughs> okay, so so this is a big deal. Like we have people left and right again. Sin is just so rampant. There's so many accusations and so much stuff in the news all the time that it's desensitizing people. But we got people that are constantly accusing people of, oh yeah, well you know what? When I was a teenager, this person abused me or something like that. You know, this person raped me. And uh, look, I, I'm not getting into current events and whether this person is innocent or guilty. That's not my intention. But what I'm saying is, I think there'd be a lot less of that if the law was, hey, if you were wrong about that, if you were falsely Amen. accusing right. them, Amen. you get their punishment. Oh, yeah, and by the way, that punishment is death. Amen. <laughs> there'd be a lot, a lot less of that going on. Right. Yeah. So uh, it's interesting, too, okay, two out of the Ten Commandments has to do with our speech, right? One, don't use the name of the Lord in vain. No one's not bearing false witness, right? This is something that we do with our mouth, the communication that we make. And you're right, I, I recently spoke on this, and I said that life and death are in the power of the tongue. I mean, think about how powerful it is. We can, with our mouth, say something to accuse somebody that gets them sentenced to, sentenced to death. All right, and so we got to be very careful not to do that. Obviously, false witness is something that's bad. Number four would be this: self praise. Self praise yeah. Yeah. is is sinful. Now, I, I'm trying to think. I don't know if I can 100% show you a place in the Bible where where it actually nails this down and says that this is sin. But we can look at some verses and consider this. Proverbs 27:2 says this: Let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, a stranger, and not thine own lips. Look, it's in our human nature, we want people to say good things about us, okay? And if they're not saying it, then all of a sudden we'll start saying it about ourselves, all right? And we start talking about ourselves like we're just the best thing out there, and, and we're so good, and look, you know, when you're doing that, it's not really impressing anybody, first of all. Yeah. yeah. Nobody, Nobody's impressed by someone who just toots their own horn and just says uh, great things about themselves all the time. And not only that, but God's not impressed. In fact, in fact, if there was something to be rewarded, and you went on praising yourself about it, God's going to take away your reward. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you just lost that reward, buddy, because you just went out, you know, just bragging about how good you are. Right. It was a good thing that you did, but once you start bragging about it, I'm taking that away from you. Okay? We don't want to do that by any means. Proverbs 25, 27. It is not good to eat much honey. Man, I love honey. But if you ate too much of it, it make you sick, right? I don't think I've ever eaten that much honey. <laughs> it's not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory is not glory. <laughs> you know, it's compar comparable to eating too much money, and, uh, too much honey, and making yourself sick. <laughs> don't eat money. <laughs> to eat too much honey, making yourself sick. Somebody who's just constantly seeking their own glory. That's wicked. 2 Corinthians 10, 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. That's pretty interesting, comparing themselves among themselves. All right? Here's what happens, like, when people start thinking that they're so great. Yeah. Yeah. They're really just setting the bar really low. And a lot of times I'm like, well, look how great I am. Yeah. Like, there's always somebody out there that's better at you. Right. And whatever it is you think you're good at, yeah. there's someone way better than you. But oh, you're just, you're setting the standard at what you think is good. Right. Right. Look how good I am. Now look, no, no, no. You can set the standard at the best person in the world, right? Whoever that is, I don't know. Right? You can set your standard, hey, that's my standard. This is the, this is perfection right here. You're still going to fall way short yeah. of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> there is no, look, none of us are good. None of us have any reason to be prideful and say, "Look how great I am." Wow. We all fall short. We're, Amen. we're nothing in, in, in God's eyes. Okay. Second yeah. Corinthians ten eighteen. For not he that committed himself is approved of whom the Lord commended. Second Corinthians twelve eleven. I am become a fool in glorying. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostle, though I be nothing. Now, I'm not talking about 
false humility. You know what I mean? People just constantly, oh, no, you're so much better than I am. And I, you know, sometimes those guys are fishing for, no, no, you're yeah. wonderful. <laughs> and that's really not any different than, than self-praise, right? Yeah. <laughs> so we got to be careful, right? Self-praise can be simple. And, and again, some, some of these, even if it's not necessarily uh, not necessarily sinful uh, to to praise yourself. I, mean, I, I, I guess that's sinful, but even it wasn't necessarily sinful. Look, the things that people do in order to praise themselves is sinful. For instance, very false witness. Yeah. Pretending like you're good when really you're like stretching the truth, right? And uh, it, well, that's nowadays that's so easy to do. Instagram and Facebook, oh, yeah. and make it look like you're just some just wonderful, just perfect person out there. And you're lying. That's very false witness. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me move on to the next one. Number five. We're talking about seven things you can do with your words or with your mouth that would be a sin. Okay. Let me review real fast. So we got blasphemy. We've got uh, let's see one or two here. cursing. We've got false witness. We've got self praise. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, and I'll, I'll just, I, I'm just trying to lump a whole bunch of things in one category here, so I'm going to say this, inappropriateness, okay? Saying something that is inappropriate. How do we define what's inappropriate? Well, I think this is a good verse. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4, uh, a good verse to show us some things that fall into this category. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 4 says, uh, man, I... Let me just start with verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Neither... Now, these are all things that are going to have to do with what we do with our mouth, right? Filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Remember that verse in James, hey, out of your mouth comes a blessing and a curse. These things ought not so to be. He's saying, look, if you're a Christian, you're putting on good works. You want to do good things with your mouth. You want to praise the Lord. You want to give thanks to the Lord and honor and glorify him. Not, and then it lists all these things, and, and it says filthiness, all right? Don't talk with a filthy mouth. You ever heard that said, okay? Don't speak uh, foolishly, foolish talking. Uh, I'll get on that in a minute. Jesting, all right? Jesting, is much good. another word would be like, like mocking or kidding around, you know, mocking somebody, teasing somebody. Yeah, uh, so this would include what is known as locker room banter. You remember when President Trump was, was called out for something that he said, and uh, it was filthy, it was wicked, all right? And all the Fox News, even Fox News Baptists, even the, even the Baptists that were like, hey, we got to defend Trump, we got to defend Trump. You know what they would say? They would say, well, come on, this is locker room talk. Which of us have never, you know, talked inappropriately around our friends? Look, it's wicked. I don't care what you say about it. You know, I, yes, have you been guilty of it? Sure. Does that make it any less wicked? No, it's wicked. And he said some, some filthy things in private, not knowing that the microphone was on catching him. And he was saying some bad, inappropriate things. And look, if we speak inappropriately with our mouth, that's sinful, right? And we don't want to say anything that would be locker room banter, uh, talking. You know, I remember, I've talked to you about this before, but I remember when I was in Bible college, I was only in the dorms for a very short amount of time, but I remember in there that they would make all these jokes all the time and talk to each other like they were homosexual. And I'm like, why are you doing this? Obviously. Right. And then what's funny about that is I remember that happening, this was at BBC, and then I heard like rumors about, you know, I mean, the pre a preacher came down really hard because they heard some guys at Heartland doing that same thing. Yeah. And later I heard somebody preaching a message and they said West Coast people were doing that. And I'm like, what is it about all these Bible colleges, people getting in there, and they're, and they're pretending to be homosexual and like joking with each other like it's a joking matter. That's not a joking matter. Right. Don't yeah. tease about that kind of stuff. Right. That's, just, that's foolish talking. That's inappropriate talking. Don't, don't do that. How about racial slurs? Yeah. You know, like, like, like somebody can help the color of their skin, and you're going to just make fun of them. 
like behind always looking, hey, th this is that private schoolyard talk, you know, and you're making fun of somebody because of their race. What, what's the point of that? Who gets right. glory in that? Right. You know, that's sinful talking. People making uh, jokes about other people. Look, we, we tend to do that. I remember I started something. Oh, I'm about to start it here. Watch this. But <laughs> I started something at Iola when I became a youth pastor. I went there. And my first time, I'm just like trying to be funny and everything with the kids. And so I said something about I said, hey, I just learned a new word, muffin top. And I started talking about my muffin top, right? It became my nickname from there on out, Muffin Top. And I'm like, oh man, I shouldn't have done that because now I got teens calling their youth, youth pastor, you know, making fun of the Muffin Top. And I'm thinking, hey, you know, now, I got, now I'm getting bald on top. My kids making fun of my bald head. And I'm like, hey, you know what happened when every kid's talking about Elisha? Go up that bald head. She bear comes out, rips me. Don't make fun of my bald head. <laughs> Making fat jokes about people and stuff like that. Look. I, su I suspect there's a time and, and fun to be able to uh, do certain things, but you better be very, very careful because inappropriate speaking, making fun of people, using our mouths in that kind of way can be sinful. I have no doubt about it. All right. Number six, two more. Number six, this is real quick. Flattery. Flattery. Now, a lot of times flattery is associated with, with other sins. Okay, uh, let me just give you a couple of verses. Proverbs 29, 5 says, a man that flattereth with his neighbor, I'm sorry, a man that flattereth his neighbor spreadeth a net for his feet. So, so like if someone's just going around and they're just always praising you and saying good things about you, you know, they're probably bearing false witness, first of all. <laughs> Brother Rocky's so good at basketball. <laughs> I'm just teasing, but if someone's constantly flattering you, a red light ought to go off in your head. Yeah. You ought to be like, whoa, they're spreading the net out for me. You know, they're trying to capture me. <laughs> they're trying to, you know, do something. I don't know. And I get real uncomfortable around people that just always, not like it's not wrong to say something nice to somebody, but people that just constantly just giving you flattery and all that. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. What are they trying to get from me? Right. Be careful. <laughs> be careful. It's a joke, brother. <laughs> okay, uh, what was the number? Okay, so 1 Thessalonians 2 5 says this For neither at any time used we flattering words, as ye know, nor a cloak of covetousness, God is witness. So here is Paul, and he's preaching to the Thess uh, church of Thessalonica, and he's saying, Look, we didn't come in here preaching to you with flattering words. You know, you know what preachers that are just constantly flattering people are usually trying to get? And get your money. We want you to stay. We don't want you to leave. We don't want to. I don't want to preach a, a certain doctrine that's going to offend you and make you want to leave because we're going to lose our popularity and lose our money and all that kind of stuff. Look, look, preachers can can be flatterers too, and we don't want to ever do that. And Paul said, "Look, I didn't come to you with flattery. No, no, no. Uh, you you understand that? Okay. So it's important that we speak truth." And usually speaking truth is going to make, and I'm not saying just go around tearing people down either, uh, you know, be wise about the way you do it, but don't go and just constantly be flattering and pretending like everything's great because what you're doing is probably failing to give them the truth, which is actually going to help them. Right. And so this is a, a great uh, uh, evil that we can fall into is just constantly wanting to flatter with the mouth and we, re we, we re fail to say that which is good. Proverbs 28, 23 says this, He that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. Right. Not at first. Notice he says afterward. <laughs> Not at first. If you don't flatter with your tongue, if you say something and, uh, and it's a bit of a rebuke and it's hard for somebody to hear, they're going to hate your guts for a while. Okay? Right. But hopefully if it was speaking the truth in love, they're going to find out later on, man, he had my best interest at heart, Amen. and he was right, and I need to get that right. Amen. And so, uh, and, and look, and a guy that receives that is going to be a good man. A guy that doesn't receive that is probably never going to learn. He's, he's, he's going to keep on falling into more and more sin. All right, so don't be afraid to rebuke, because in the opposite of that would be just flattering all the time. And look, he's not, in the end, the guy that's re rebuking in Christian love is going to be, uh, you know, is going to be received much better than the one that was flattering, flattering, flattering. Yep. And look, he didn't help you one bit. Yeah. 
Yeah. So flattering with the tongue is also a possibility, very co very common sin that we fall into with our mouth. Okay. Number seven. This is the last one. Now, this might sound a little bit uh, contrary to what I'm talking about because I'm talking about words and everything. But what do we do with our mouth that's sinful? Here's the last one: silence. You know, being silent could be a sin. Right. Again, very much like the point that I just made, sometimes something has to be said even though it's hard to say and you don't want to be unpopular, you don't want to make somebody mad, but silence can be a sin. James 4, 17 says, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a sin. I know everybody in here has felt at one time or another, like I know I should do that. And then you just, you just don't do it. And inside your heart, you're like, I just sinned against God. And you have to ask forgiveness for that because you know that you did wrong by not saying something that you should have said or not doing something that you should have done. Uh, here's another way we could be silent and it be a sin. Failing to pray for one another. You know, that's actually a sin. We fail to pray for one another. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 12. Now, in this particular case, Samuel's a minister of God, you know, a prophet. And uh, he's talking about how he should be praying for the nation of Israel. But first Samuel chapter 12. In verse 23 says, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. And so he's talking to Israel and saying, look, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to intercede with you. I'm going to try to teach you what you're doing when you're doing wrong. I'm going to try to teach you to do right. And so, uh, and he says it would be a sin for him not to pray for them. So that's something that we can do with our mouths that would be sinful is to fail to pray for one another. Uh, some people call this uh, type of thing the sin. You know, you have sin. We usually think of sins of commission. If you do a certain thing that you're not supposed to do, that's a sin. But there's also what we call the sin of omission, all right? There's something that you know you should be doing, but you don't ever do it. That's a sin, too. And so uh, with our mouth, uh, we could be uh, sinful, okay? How about this? Failing to preach the gospel. Right. Failing to preach the gospel, that's a sin. Okay. You know you're supposed to do it. The Bible said you're supposed to do it. Ezekiel 33, 6 says, But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the words at my mouth and warn them from me. And God is talking to Ezekiel specifically at this point and saying, in, in, in this context, he's talking specifically to Ezekiel. But I think we can get a good application from that. He says, let's say your job is to stand on top of the watchtower, right? In the kingdoms, you know, we live in a time where we don't have to live under this fear, but they all they were always at a threat of the enemy kingdom coming and conquering them and taking their spoils and taking them captivity and all that. And so they always had to be ready. Their soldiers had to be, always be guarding the, uh, the, the fortress or whatever. And so these guys would stand up on the watchtower, and when they saw... The enemy coming, they're just like, hey, man, destruction is fixing to come. And they had to lift up the trumpet and sound the warning and say, look, he's coming. <laughs> you know, they're coming. You got to you gotta get in position and get ready. All right? But if a watchman saw them coming and didn't blow the trumpet, so I think, yeah, I think I'm just going to take cover, hide out, and, uh, and uh, let all my brethren just perish. <laughs> Wouldn't that be pretty wicked? You know, and he says, look, if you do that, the blood is on your hands. The blood of all those people, it's your fault because you didn't say anything. And look, that should be a great motivation for soul winning. Amen. Right? Great motivation for soul winning because we say, now look, it's every man's responsibility to receive Christ. Okay, whether you give him the gospel or don't give him the gospel. So don't give me the whole, like, why do my people that have never heard the gospel? It's every man's responsibility to receive Christ. Right? The gospel has gone into the whole world. I believe it's going to go into the whole world again. Now, more than ever, it can go into the world through social media and uh, internet and all that kind of stuff and easy travel, you know, jump on an airplane real easily, missionaries all over the place. Look, people are without an excuse, but 
if we just sit back, knowing that our neighbors, you know, how many people we knock on the door, and what percentage of people are actually saved, really small <laughs> percentage of people that are saved. And if we just kind of sit back and say, well, you know what, I know all these people are going to die and go to hell, but who cares? <laughs> Blood on our hands. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. wicked. That's yeah. doing something with our mouth that's sinful. Yeah. It's doing nothing. It's being silent. Yeah. Okay. That can be wicked. So, in conclusion, if the bottom line is we are going to sin with our mouth every day. Okay? I'm not trying to say, look, now clean up your life and just be perfect. Now, I want you to strive for that. But the fact of the matter is we're going to mess up. We're going to commit a sin one of these seven, only just just with our, with our mouth, not including all the other ways that we can sin. The fall of foolishness is sin, right? So we want to uh, understand we're going to mess up, we're all wicked, we're going to fall into sin, uh, we're going to commit sins with our mouth. We need to try not to do that, but here's the, here's the bottom line. If you think that you can just kind of clean up your life Show people on the outward that, hey, I'm cleaning up my speech. I'm not saying all these kinds of things. If you think that you can do that on the outside without changing the inside, it's not going to happen. What did Jesus say? He said, not that which goes into a man that defiles a man, but that which comes out of his mouth, right? Yeah. It all has to do with the heart. <clears throat> Jesus said, Matthew 15, 19, he said, For out of the heart proceedeth evil thoughts, right? It wouldn't be in your thought, it wouldn't be in your mind if it wasn't in your heart. Out of your heart proceeds murders. Jesus said, look, you say, I've never killed anybody, but look, you hated your brother in your heart without a cause, right? That's that's headed towards murder, isn't it? Because it's coming out of your heart. No murder, just, you know, it always starts in the heart. Out of your heart proceeded adulteries. First time you look at uh, uh, somebody to lust after them, but that's just starting, you know, you down the road to uh, commit adultery. Yeah. Or fornications is the next thing. Out of the heart proceeded thefts, right? I mean, I mean, you don't just like, man, I've got a clean heart. I want the I want the will of God done in my life. You know, I want to serve him, I want to make him happy. Oh, where's that money come from? Still that you know, no one's looking. No, something was already wrong in the heart. Yeah. This desire for things, this covetousness, this 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 longing to have have what belongs to somebody else. Look, that's a wicked heart. And so, what proceeds out of that are all these actions. And here's what it says. Let me read it again. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries, fornications, thefts. Look at this. False witness, blasphemies. <laughs> right? All the things that we can do with our mouth, look, they all start in our heart. So I can't get up here really and say, you got to do this, you got to do that. I mean, I can enforce that with my kids. I can say, hey, no one's going to preach up here and use this word. I, I, could, I could give you all those kinds of things, but the bottom line is it has to start in the heart. You have to want to do what's going to be pleasing to God. And want to do what's going to be most effective in getting people the gospel and all that. And if the heart is right, Good things are going to proceed out of it. Okay, but a blessing and a cursing should come out of the same tongue. These things all come so to right. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. I still maybe didn't explain uh, what exactly it is that we can say or do, but I hope the message was clear tonight that the uh, uh, that our heart, if our hearts are right and we want to serve you, then we're not going to want to do these things. Lord, help us not to blaspheme your your name. Uh, help us not to curse people. Help us not to uh, bear false witness or do any of these things, Lord, and then help us not to keep silent when we know that we should preach the gospel or uh, or tell people the truth and love. And I pray that you bless those efforts as we do that. We understand there will be uh, hard times in this life and some things will be unpopular or some people won't like us for being a certain way. Uh, but I pray, Lord, that you just help us to be faithful, steadfast on those things, and uh, understand, Lord, that you're the one that gives out the rewards in the end. And you're a rewarder of those who diligently seek you. So I pray that you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen.